An Air India Boeing 787-8 is preparing to cross half the globe en route to London Gatwick. On board are 230 passengers and a well-trained crew. The sun beats down on the tarmac as the Gen X engines hum softly during startup. Everything seems to be in order. Everything seems to be under control. But that's about to change. June 12th, 2025. Ahmedabad International Airport, India. It's 1.30 p.m. and here, Air India Flight 171 is about to begin taxiing toward its assigned departure runway. It will do so with a delay of approximately 30 minutes from its scheduled takeoff time. Flight AI-171 operated the regular route between Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel Airport in Ahmedabad and London Gatwick Airport in the United Kingdom. A distance of approximately 7,000 kilometers across the Eurasian continent, crossing northern India, Pakistan, Iran, Turkey, Central Europe, and the English Channel. The takeoff was scheduled for 1.10 p.m. local time, and the estimated flight time was just over nine hours. The aircraft performing this flight was a Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner, registration VTANB, manufactured in 2013 and operated by Air India. It was powered by two General Electric Gen X 1B70 engines. It had accumulated over 41,800 flight hours and was up to date with its maintenance. It was equipped with two state-of-the-art EAFR recorders, which combined flight data and cockpit audio. This aircraft was the first of the 34 Dreamliners delivered to Air India since 2013. Air India is the flag carrier of the Republic of India and one of the most recognized airlines in the Asian continent. Founded in 1932, it began operations as Tata Airlines before being nationalized in 1953. For decades, it was synonymous with national pride and a symbol of India's aviation growth, operating key routes to Europe, America, and Asia. Over the years, however, it accumulated significant financial losses and management issues that seriously affected its reputation and operational efficiency. In 2022, after years of decline, the Indian government privatized the company and sold it back to the Tata Group, symbolically returning the airline to its original founders. Since then, Air India has embarked on an ambitious transformation process. It has revamped its corporate image, modernized its fleet, and launched an internal restructuring to regain global competitiveness. It currently operates more than 120 aircraft, including 33 Boeing Dreamliners, 27 of which are the 787-8 model. Flight A I-171 was one of those Dreamliners, number 34. The captain, 56 years old, had over 15,600 flight hours, more than 8,500 of which were on the Boeing 787, and had served as captain on that model for over 8,200 hours. The first officer, 32 years old, had 3,400 total flight hours, including more than 1,100 on the 787, but was not certified as a captain on this aircraft type. Both pilots had properly rested and were cleared to fly that day. Neither showed traces of alcohol or substances in the pre-flight tests. On board were 230 passengers, 10 cabin crew members, and two pilots, totaling 242 people. It's 1.39 p.m. local time in Ahmedabad. The sun is blazing and Flight AI-171 has just lined up with Runway 23 of the airport. The Dreamliner VTANB rolls to the threshold after receiving clearance from the tower. Passengers fasten their seatbelts. The cabin crew finishes securing the galley and takes their positions for takeoff.
Air India 171, runway 23, wind 240 at 6, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff. Air India 171. The throttles advance. The Genie-X engines roar. The aircraft begins its takeoff roll, accelerating down the tarmac. V1, then rotation, and within seconds, the nose lifts and the plane leaves Indian soil behind. Then, just three seconds after liftoff, everything falls apart. Inexplicably, the fuel control switches for both engines move to the cutoff position. Just one second apart, the engines begin to spool down. Power drops. The aircraft, which had barely reached 180 knots, begins losing thrust. From the cockpit, a pilot with a tense voice asks, Why did you cut the fuel supply? I didn't. The deployment of the Ram Air Turbine, RAT, is visible from the ground. A small turbine automatically extends to power the hydraulic systems in case of total power loss. The aircraft doesn't gain enough altitude. Before clearing the perimeter fence, it begins to descend. Confusion reigns on board. There's no time to react. Even though the pilots re-engage the fuel switches and the system attempts to restart both engines, it's too late. The control tower receives a distress mayday call. What is your call sign? Identify your flight. But there was no time for anything else. Five seconds after receiving the message, at 1.39 p.m., the Boeing 787 strikes a chimney and trees within a military medical complex. It then crashes into Building A of the BJ Medical College. The aircraft disintegrates in a chaotic sequence, the tail embedded in the wall, wings torn apart, engines ripped off entirely. The flight deck is completely destroyed, over 600 feet from the initial point of impact. Intense fire engulfs the wreckage. The controller has barely heard the mayday when, in the distance, he sees a massive column of smoke rising from the BJ Medical College campus. Within seconds, the airport-wide emergency alarm is activated. There's no doubt. Flight AI-171 has crashed. At 1.44 p.m., the first crash fire tender breaches the airport gate and heads toward the impact site. It is followed by ambulances, city rescue teams, and army personnel who were already nearby. The scene is harrowing. The Boeing 787 has torn through multiple buildings. Flames shoot several meters into the air and parts of the fuselage are embedded in the structures of the medical campus. Amid the chaos, the scorching heat, and the smoldering wreckage, firefighters reach what remains of the central fuselage, near what used to be the economy class section. There, miraculously alive, they find a single passenger emerging from the twisted metal and shattered seats. He's injured and dazed. He's a young man of British nationality, who had been seated on an aisle near the wing. He is discovered approximately 10 minutes after the impact, and his account will later prove crucial to understanding what happened in the final seconds of the flight. Meanwhile, rescue teams search every square meter of the impact area. Five buildings have suffered structural damage. Several people on the ground have died, either trapped or struck by fragments of the fuselage and fire. The plane's wreckage is scattered across a 300-meter area, including engines, landing gear, and parts of the flight deck. Operations continue for hours, then days. Drones are used to map the debris, thermal cameras to locate bodies among the rubble, and hydraulic tools to move fuselage sections. But nothing will change the final toll. 241 people dead on board and another 19 on the ground. What had happened? How did the fuel control switches get moved? 
The investigation into Flight AI-171 is being led by India's Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau in collaboration with the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board, which represents the country where both the aircraft and engines were designed and manufactured. Also involved are Boeing, General Electric, the FAA, and aviation safety agencies from the United Kingdom, Portugal, and Canada, as citizens from those countries were among the victims. From the outset, the investigation has focused on the strange fuel cutoff of both engines during the initial climb, a highly unusual event in commercial aviation, especially on a modern aircraft like the Boeing 787-8. According to the digital flight record, at 1.39 p.m. local time, just three seconds after reaching its top speed of 180 knots, the fuel control switches for both engines moved from run to cutoff, one after the other, with only a one-second gap between them. This caused the engines to stop receiving fuel and rapidly spool down. Both pilots, surprised, asked each other what had happened. The report clarifies that it could not be determined which of the two crew members said each line. Human error, technical failure, or both? Authorities have made it clear that no prior malfunctions were detected in the switches or the fuel system. There were also no recent reports of related failures, and no maintenance issues were identified. Both engines were relatively new on the aircraft. The left one had been installed just six weeks earlier, and the right one three months prior. Unintentional human error has not been ruled out, such as accidental movement of the switches while handling other controls. But the fact that both switches moved in sequence, just one second apart, has led some investigators to consider the possibility of an electrical anomaly, software failure, or even system interference, such as between the auto throttle module and the FADEC units. A significant detail has emerged from Boeing's historical records. In December 2018, the FAA issued a Special Airworthiness Information Bulletin, SAIBNM-18-33, warning that some fuel control switches may have been installed without correctly engaging their locking mechanisms, making them susceptible to unintended movement. The bulletin mentioned Boeing models like the 737, but noted that the switch design was similar on the 787, including Part 4 TL837-3D, which was used in the accident aircraft. However, since this was a non-binding bulletin, not an airworthiness directive, Air India did not perform the recommended inspection something now under intense scrutiny by investigators and international media. Once the engines shut down, the crew attempted to restart them by moving the switches back to the run position. The FADEX system automatically initiated the ignition relay and fuel reintroduction sequence. One of the engines, the left one, managed to reverse its loss of RPM, the other did not. But the available time was minimal. The aircraft had taken off at less than 15 meters, 50 feet, above ground level, and the loss of thrust occurred just moments after gaining a few additional meters. The Ram Air Turbine, RAT, deployed, indicating a total loss of normal electrical generation, and the APU began to start up, confirming that emergency systems were activated. But neither the thrust nor the altitude were sufficient for recovery. The impact occurred about 30 seconds after the failure. Although the preliminary report does not identify a definitive cause, several technical lines of investigation are being explored. Simultaneous accidental shutdown due to human error, possibly involving unintentional physical contact with the switches. Electrical failure in the fuel control system or in the auto throttle logic. Anomalous movement of the switches due to electromagnetic interference or mechanical failure. Very rare, but not impossible. Possible installation without an active lock on the switches, as previously warned in the 2018 SAIB. Sabotage or deliberate interference currently ruled out, as there are no signs of this in the cockpit recording or in maintenance security environments. Detailed analysis of the CVR and flight data continues in New Delhi, with support from Boeing and GE technicians. The only useful black box was the forward EAFR, whose memory survived the impact. The second one, located in the tail, was destroyed. 
The preliminary report has not yet issued any technical recommendations, but there is already talk of potentially converting the 2018 SAIB into a mandatory airworthiness directive, which would require inspection of all fuel control switches on 787 models in service. The final report will be crucial in determining whether the incident was caused by human error, technical failure, or a combination of both. For now, the international aviation community is closely watching what is considered one of the most puzzling cases in recent memory. The impact killed nearly all occupants and caused partial destruction of five buildings on the Ahmedabad medical complex. Air India's image was severely damaged. Boeing and GE now face new investigations into the Dreamliner's fuel control system. Thank you for joining me on June 12th, 2025. The day a modern Boeing 787 became the center of a mystery that still has pieces left to fall into place. The cockpit recordings reveal a bewildering scene two pilots stunned by a shutdown that neither claims to have initiated. Was it human error, a design flaw, a mechanical issue hidden for years, or perhaps something else? As the investigations continue, the promise remains to find answers, and above all, to learn from what happened, so that the story of Air India Flight 171 is never repeated. <laughs>